out of this. Greetings, I'm Shad, and as you've probably been able to tell, I want to talk a little bit about cloaks, but not just cloaks. I want to talk about how they would affect fighting and combat, and uh, because this is actually quite important. If you're wanting to capture an accurate medieval aesthetic in your fantasy setting, and even like, say, role-playing and stuff, and when I say fantasy setting, like, like literature, if you're writing fantasy, but if you're also just playing in fantasy, uh, capes and cloaks are actually quite an important element to consider because of just how prominent they were in the medieval period for very important utilitarian reasons. These are useful items of clothing. So before we get into the direct kind of comparison of how problematic these would be for fighting, and if you can, what are the, uh, some pros and cons, I actually want to dive into a little bit of the history and utility of the cloaks, just so you know what role they really should fulfill in your setting and the general utility of them. So what I'm wearing right now would classically be called a cloak, complete with, <laughs> with hood. <laughs> You do not know the power of the dark side of the force. So clearly, uh, visibility is an issue that we'll bring up for, but, but a good cloak needs a good hood uh, for the reasons we'll go into. But the other interesting thing about this is this is distinctly a cloak separate to a cape. What's the difference between a cloak and a cape? Well, for one, a cloak is mainly a garment to keep you warm when it's cold, but also it's basically the medieval raincoat, all right? If it's raining everything, a cloak is meant to keep you dry and the, to achieve that purpose, it needs to close at the front. Otherwise you've got this big whole thing where rain can fall in. So it needs to be able to close at the front, go all the way around, then you've got a full cloak where you could be one of the dark mysterious travelers on a lonesome road. So what I'm wearing right now is specifically a cape. There's no hood and it, it can't come full, well, like maybe at a stretch, but it's difficult, okay? This is mainly mainly a fashion accessory. And so when you just fold over the sides like so, it actually can look rather striking with your entire ensemble. Look at my cape, my cape is amazing. So capes, generally more of a fashion accessory, especially when you see the kind of royal capes that a king is wearing or something like that. And cloaks have a far more practical purpose in keeping you warm and keeping the rain off. The interesting thing about that is that a cloak can function as a cape when they're dressed up quite a lot. So, and if you're wanting me to comment on my whole medieval look, if you haven't seen it before, I have a whole video already assessing the accuracies and importance importantly, the inaccuracies of this new medieval outfit I'm wearing. And don't worry, the gambeson will never go away. Okay, I think I'll only have to be able to bring this out on special occasions when it's particularly appropriate, like assessing the utility of cloaks in medieval combat. Utility? Well, I mean, well, look, there are some interesting uses, but how much they get in the way and other things like that. Because if you're role-playing, okay, especially, there is an interesting thing. Cloaks are actually quite common in terms of the magic repertoire. I remember when I was playing Classic Baldur's Gate, the Cloak of Protection was one of the most important items. Like you uh, because it was an additional inventory slot, cloaks were always used because it was a, another item where you could put an enchantment on and they had really cool useful things. And again, the cloak of protection is like one of the classic things, but look at Lord of the Rings, okay? The, uh, clo the, elven, the elven kind cloak or something like that, you know, that is able to um, keep you hidden more. So cloaks are always there, they're, they're very important. But if they're always there, that means we should be paying attention to how they would affect combat. For instance, if they are getting in the way, one of the first things you might want to do whenever you get in combat is to remove your cloak. But if it's for serving a fun, you know, magical purpose to either protect you or you know, disguise you and stuff, well, that means you might get a, an appropriate negative on your combat score with dealing with it. And if you're writing, you might actually have to say specifically what they do with their cloak to just get out of the way. And these are just small little elements that add great, you know, immersive bits of realism that draws you in and everything. So this is good, it's good to consider. I'm I'm gonna move back to my cloak now because, uh, because I can't, well, I mean, the cape is fabulous. But uh, I think the cloak is gonna be more common for adventures and stuff like that because of its usefulness, okay? And just to get ahead of the many questions I usually get because uh, it happens regularly, if you're wondering where I got this stuff from, I got it from armstreet.com and no, this is not sponsored, but when uh, there's a company that I use that's good quality and stuff like that, I'm more than happy to give them a shout out because they deserve it. And so th there we go, they got a free promotion right there on a Shadowversity video. But basically, uh, yeah, everything I'm wearing comes from Arm Street. The boots, the, the, the cloak, even the, the, the sword frog video where I address this. And uh, yeah, so it's pretty good. So just so you know, in case you weren't aware, cloaks have been used for 
a very long time throughout the past. And it's kind of a, kind of a, you know, a tragedy that they've fallen out of fashion, but that's because we have the technology and ability to uh, make things that serve the purpose that cloaks served, but a lot better. And that's basically raincoats and other things like it. Things with sleeves and stuff, because as soon as you have sleeves, well, instead of having to wrap this all around me, I can actually make it part of my regular clothes and I could actually put, a, say, a belt around it instead of getting, you know, my, my sword caught on the, on the cloak and other things because it's kind of sticking out. There's, there's something wrong with this image. Is this a sword under my cloak or am I just happy to see you? Now, I should mention that generally there is no standard, you know, cloak form, okay? In many instances, a blanket, all right, wrapped around someone's neck with a kind of like this brochy thing to uh, clip it to get, well, not clip it, it's like it's a pin, basically, pin it on, it serves the function of a cloak, okay? And I think even uh, Lindy Bage, great video, Lloyd from Lindy Bage, made a whole video addressing kind of um, blankety cloaks and stuff. Been a while since I watched the video, but it was a great, I remember it being good, so yeah, it's a good one to check out. But then of course you have specific custom made cloaks that were made to be cloaks and also to be fashion accessories. They could be dressed up and everything. And they existed all the way through to the 1800s, okay? If you're going outside, general convention is if you wanted to be warm and just in case it was raining and stuff like that, you uh, wear a cloak with you. And you would generally take it off inside because uh, inside would be warmer and stuff like that. And uh, one of the things that you'll find that's, that can be interesting and tricky with a cloak is trying to manage sitting down and stuff. I went to a medieval feast recently going to be a whole video on it during the Abbey Medieval Festival which was actually hosted by the organizer part of the events of the Abbey Medieval Festival this feast great and I wore my cloak while and uh, I, I there was no coat rack to hang it so of course I needed to wear it generally there would always be like a coat rack where you could just take it off hang it sit down enjoy a meal and it was interesting how often the cloak would get in the way because as soon as you uh, sit down well the cloak rubs on the floor and other things like that. And if it's a high back chair, you kind of got to swing it around, it just gets in the way. So when you're sitting down, you want to take a cloak off. Just, just an interesting uh, observation, which means you would rarely ever wear them inside. But would you wear them when fighting? Hmm, let, let, let's now uh, explore that. Because uh, just looking at what we see here, the sword is getting in the way of, of a cloak. I mean, it's poking out as I was uh, a bit, uh, you know, immature with before, but you see the sword underneath, okay? Now, it can still fully wrap around you. It's, it's covering the mic, fully wrap around you. So my sword here isn't actually getting in the way too much with the function of the cloak. I can close it fully, keep myself, you know, dry from the rain. I'm gonna, you know, shut my hood on. <laughs> I'm not sure if they were meant to be made that way, but uh, I got my hood, but you can, can I, like, <laughs> I wonder how difficult it would be to kind of hide the sword underneath. I have to try and put it there, but, uh, yeah. If you were using a regular long sword instead of a, sorry, if you were using a regular arming sword instead of a long sword, much easier to conceal because it wouldn't be sticking up so much. But this is an important point. If you're trying to sneak into somewhere and hide your weapons in there, if you're all playing or in literature, well, it's kind of hard to hide the sword. Maybe you could hang it on your back a bit lower. Back scabbard could get, oh, dang it. I need to test this with my back scabbard down. <laughs> Stay tuned, back scabbard test with cloak coming. And it's really not getting in the way too much. I mean, because my hands are extended beyond the, the, the cloak itself, it's very hard for the cloak to get in the way from any of, you know, your stances, uh, like guard positions, attacks and stuff. So, okay, yep. We're, we're all good here. Yet, just the fact that it is resting on your arms and you feel this kind of simple drag, okay, and you really wanted to focus on the fighting aspect, I think if you had the preference, you'd probably take it off. But if you couldn't, it wouldn't be so detrimental that I'd say, uh, in role playing, for instance, you need an actual uh, penalty on your attack rolls or whatever because you're wearing the cloak. If you're wearing a hood, on the other hand, well, uh, <laughs> yeah, as we've seen this one. Mm -hmm. But all right, even here, okay. My peripheral vision is very much affected. Don't knock my glasses off. Okay, so this is interesting. Like, one, why on earth would you keep the hood up when you're fighting? Yes, I'm looking at you, Assassin's Creed. Thank you, Wynn, that was very convenient. So yeah, Assassin's Creed, I'm looking at you, fighting with your hood on, all right? Uh, your peripheral vision is really affected. Like, look at how much I need to turn before. I, uh, basically, right now, bang, like that, that's, that's the version. And if I was to actually you know, put it down. My peripheral vision goes all the way over. If you can see my hand, I can still see it, still see it, still see my fingers twirling right here. So my peripheral vision, if I'm gonna bring a, 
is about like that, okay? So <laughs> pretty darn wide. And it's very useful to seeing anything coming in on the side, your peripheral region to block. And so that we're fighting with the hood up. No, if I was just wearing the hood normally where I'd want it, like here, is there a chance that with moving around and everything, oh, there it goes, well, look, two points three in. One, your glasses could fly off, but if the hood can fall further down and it's got so much room like this, oh, you'd be a bloody moron to fight with the hood up. You just, it's like, you want to fight with it, because it's like, I don't have much hope here. Interesting, in my video, you know, uh, is the back scabbard a plausible real, like, is it, is it useful? Okay, I know we know it's not historic and stuff, but I have a successful video, so I have a soft spot in my heart for that video. Uh, we do postulate, or I postulate at least, certain elements which make the back scabbard useful. Yet, I wonder if this could be another point of reference which might indicate why they were not so common in history, because if cloaks were very, very common, okay, uh, and, it, and it gets in the way of the utility and usefulness of my back scabbard, well, I mean, that means you wouldn't be able to wear a sword on your back if you wanted to wear a cloak as well. We'll get a test and find out, but that would mean a sword on your hip would be, because uh, we saw it, I was able to use it, not a problem at all, with a cloak and everything, so, we might have discovered an answer right there. Again, this will test to see how easy it is to take the cloak off. I'm not too practiced at art. Well, all right, so, so there we go, okay. It's not, not that difficult with practice. You'll be able to just lift your hand, click, it's off. Okay. <laughs> First, uh, let's just test that. Still working, yeah, okay, and... Uh, uh, yep, still got it, but the cloak issue, that's gonna be really... So the key here, right, is not so much if I can put it away because the, when you're an adventurer, um, the important part is drawing the sword because that's when you need it, okay? Presumably when you're putting the sword away, that's when all the bad people are dealt with, monsters, whatever. And if the cloak gets in the way with putting it away, that's not too much of an issue. So uh, let's, let's find out. Uh. <clears throat> hmm. <laughs> All right, uh, problem one, I can't even close it. So if you're wearing, <coughs> if you're wearing a back scabbard, you would need a custom made cloak to go. Now, <coughs> all right, so that's the first problem. I am gonna test the back scabbard being worn over the cloak. So that'll be weird and interesting, but that might solve the issue. Uh, can't close it at all, but doesn't mean the uh, <coughs> experiment has failed just yet because I still got my cape, my medieval cape. And this has a much longer string on it to tie it closed. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's see if this will wrap around it. Kind of, okay, all right. How, how are we looking on the back there? Oh, you know, I bet as soon as I draw this, it's gonna pull up and uh, over the back scabbard and I'm not gonna be able to put it back. You know, I even, you can't see, see that's, ooh. So honestly, I would need to keep it a bit loose to hang down a bit even further. So I'd need to tie it maybe here. <laughs> I look like a vagabond. All right, let me tighten it a little bit at least. Where's my color? My color's still there, am I still beautiful? All right, okay, let's keep it there. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm not gonna be able to do it, but anyway. Okay, so. We are, we are discovering the same problem that you have when trying to draw it from a regular scabbard, so that's a fail. I still can't get it out. <laughs> Back scabbard and cloak. All right, test one has failed. What about wearing the back scabbard over the cloak. All right, so honestly, if uh, I was gonna try and do this uh, properly, I would actually cut a kind of a slit about, you know, down here, oh, you can't even see it, somewhere there, right? Where the bottom belt of the back scabbard could loop inside the cloak and then come in over my chest and then it'll loop over the shoulder. If that was done, I actually think you would get the full utility of the cloak still and you could wear it. And that's the way to do it, but uh, I don't wanna cut a hole in my new cloak. 
So I'm just gonna, just, just gonna have to try and do what we can. And still, I think this will actually work because if there was no way to wear a cloak with a back scab, it'll be an interesting kind of thing to bring up in your role playing. Like, oh, you got a cloak of protection. How are you wearing your sword? On the back, on the hip, okay? And you might say, oh, it doesn't really matter. You can just wear it on the hip. But remember, in my video where we actually look at uh, the utility of having a back scabbard, there are certain things in which having a sword on your hip gets in the way, like crawling, it'll, it can hit the ground, so that will give you a uh, stealth penalty. Climbing, even running and jumping, all right? Having a side scabbard can get in the way, and a back scabbard was more secure. So uh, this will be an interesting thing. Do you want your cloak of protection? Because uh, you need to wear it on your hip. And if you're on your hip, you get these penalties in these situations. But uh, that's only if you can't wear a back scabbard with a cloak together, which I think, I think we might be able to pull this off. Quick and nasty way this time, just to, just a test, which means I need to hold the belt down like this so it doesn't slide back. Because usually I loop it around my belt there, which then secures it in place. But if it's like this, okay, Obviously, the cloak is getting in the way, but like I said, if this is able to thread to the inside of the cloak, this wouldn't be an issue. And, um, yeah, yeah, so this uh, isn't a problem. <laughs> so, all right, okay, I think we discovered it. Cloaks and back scabbards can work together. Thank goodness would have broken my heart if they couldn't, but they can, they can. It's good, good to know. Doing the real tests here. We're asking the real questions here on Shadowversity. Ah, it's kind of getting in the way of the hood, but ooh, hoods. Would the hood flap fall over? Ah, I think it does. It falls over a thing. So, aha! Hoods couldn't get, like, hoods on cloaks, uh, I'm not sure how you could work it, will always get in the way of a backscabber. So you might need specifically a hoodless cloak, because have a look at this. Ah, all right, so I got caught on it already. And uh -huh. so if this was a high speed, you know, high stress situation where you're just waylaid by monsters and things and you try and draw your back scab, but you got a hood on a coke and you get caught, you're like, ah, and then you're dead. So hoods and back scabbards. They do not work. And it's just I, I only I didn't predict it. I only discovered this through testing it. Exactly. And then like, how is the hood? The hood is over the back scabbard, I believe. It might not be, but is there all right, well, well, I'm gonna try. Oh. Yeah, okay. Where's the hood? Did the hood get the... I didn't see it. <laughs> so, I guess I'll find out in post, right? Uh, if, if the hood can just rest up here, or you throw it to your side, you know, keep the hood on the side like this, and then, then you can draw your sword, and you can... Ah, put it away with the hood there and everything. And can I just say, are you noticing how good I am at drawing this sword, putting it around the back scab? Practice makes perfect, like I said. This thing works, all right? I'm just saying it works. Witcher, where is your, your shabbard? I know you've got a back scabbard that kind of works with it. Still, my one's better. Back scabbards can work with hoods. You just need to be aware of the hood, all right? So if you're walking along, and some of the things, and it's, of course, it's looped on the inside, so this isn't getting away. You can wrap the hood, you know, the cloak all the way around on the inside, and uh, you're in a situation where you might need to draw the scabbard. You just gotta grab the hood, bring it on the side, and then you're all good. All right, okay, I am uh, happy about this. Ah, there. I, I, back scabbards and cloaks, they don't contradict one another. They still work, great. Keep my cloak of protection and back scabbard. I don't get my penalties when I'm crawling. <laughs> I want to say crawling and climbing. <laughs> when you're crawling or you're climbing or you're running and you're jumping because back scabbards are useful in those situations and I can still get my cloak of. Well, uh, would this affect, you know, uh, cloaks of elven kind where they blend into the environment because it's on the back? Not re maybe, not really. I don't know. <laughs> Things to consider. Just walking around with a cloak and sword, obviously, uh, it's perfectly fine, okay? There's only slight inconveniences here and there. All right, so, uh, honestly, I don't think the cloak is going to get in the way too much. Is it, of course, an interesting tug on the neck? Sorry if that is uh, hitting the mic. Sorry, if I, oh, see, I wouldn't want to do flourishes with a cloak. Already I can see it getting caught on it, like especially on the downward swing when I go in like this. If I get on the inside and then go up, well, uh, no, so I wouldn't say you want to do flourishes, but what about like downward strikes? I mean, you got any regular stances. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, so 
perfectly fine. I don't think this actually gets in the way too much. I don't think it's, it's honestly, it's not too bad, okay? It's, it's not bad, not bad. But there is a chance it might get caught on something. So if you're not getting any benefit of the cloak and it's not too hard to just unclip and kind of hang on, let's see how quick I could do it. If I wanted to take this uh, cloak off and I don't have much practice, well, that was pretty easy. And then you just, you would throw it away. I don't want to throw it away because it's a nice cloak. Um, and then you're good to go. So look, cloaks aren't that hard to take off, especially if it's a pin, if it's a tied knot, or if it's just simply a pull release, you're all good. So for the most part, it didn't get in the way. I would still be cautious of it getting in the way just so to be safe. I think if there's no benefit, you just might want to take it off and throw it. But is there a, so I can actually use you could have this in combat. Well, yes, there is. Now, it would be much more difficult doing this with uh, a two-handed sword. So if you had a one-handed sword, this is when you could actually use the cloak to kind of actually like flap, knock away the blade, or even wrap the blade, pull on it, and fight. And so actually using the cloak in combat is something that we do see even in the historical treatises. It's an additional tool, and if you're not using anything in your offhand, like a parrying dagger, or, or a buckler, or, or even a gauntlet, or anything like that, and you have a cloak, it's an additional tool to use. And there are certain advantages that you can get with it. You know, the flapping whole thing, and there's another thing that you can do as well. You can actually wrap it around your arm, and you can use it to block incoming strikes. I'm, I kid you not. What is a gambeson? Many, many layers of linen, essentially. And if you have a cloak that's a wool, linen, or whatever, you wrap it around like that, this will actually legitimately stop certain sword strikes. I'm not gonna say all of them, it is a risk, but in the world where dueling was far more common, say in the Renaissance, as people were using rapiers, rapiers have far less kind of bite in the cut. And also having said that, the effectiveness or the ability a sword has to cut effectively through linen really much determined, uh, is dependent on how sharp it is. Scarlagrim has done many tests, which are very instructive, where he is pitting what he regarded as really sharp swords against gambeson linen, barely, like many, in many instances, didn't even get through the first layer. But then he got someone to sharpen it up to like insane levels. We're talking like crazy, crazy level, as sharp as you possibly can. And then it was devastating his tests, okay? It was able to get through like, like gambesons that were, how many layers, I forget how many layers, but 30 or something, even more, it was crazy. And so the usefulness of say a cloak kind of blocking de defending weapon to actually catch sword cuts and things and even just pushing it aside, well, it's about as useful as generally what a gambeson would be, I would say. And depending on the sharpness of your opponent's weapon will really determine on how effectively this would be able to block incoming sword strikes. And that's just talking about blocking like full-blown hits and stuff like that. There's a lot of contact you can have with another blade that when there's not a lot of force put behind it, you can actually just throw your arm forward and just try to knock aside a blade without them actively cutting down on it. And uh, again, that would not cut through something like this. You'd get a lot of utility out of it. You'd probably get a decent amount of cut, so you're willing to sacrifice it. But seriously, if it's a choice between your own life and ruining your nice fancy cloak, I think you would choose you know, your own life over protecting your cloak. Depending on how seriously you took fashion, of course. So, interesting thing to pay attention to. If you have a character in a story or you're role playing or anything like that, and even like, you know, video game developers and stuff, if someone is using a one handed weapon and they have a cloak, having the option or thinking that because they're not using a parrying dagger or anything else, even to say they picked up just a single sword, one handed, very difficult to do it with. But seriously, on it, that's interesting. Like, because long swords, look, they can be used one handed. They're not meant to it. The, the, the balance is a lot harder. But look, you absolutely can use a long sword one hand. And, you know, you're getting the, the whole parry motion. Gosh, so much more cumbersome. But it can be done, okay? And if you think that you would get more advantage out of trying to one hand a long sword because you have a cloak and you want to use the cloak in conjunction with it and to try and catch, lock aside. Because seriously, if you're able to lock aside, push aside the opponent's weapon in one instance enough to open them up, to end the fight and kill them, well, so very, you would want to take that advantage. You, you win versus not being able to do that. So that kind of wraps up my thoughts on cloaks in combat. And I'll round off this video by just saying that, you know, if you <laughs> got caught in the wrong sword, if you've uh, got a medieval setting, whether it's literature, role playing games, whatever, and uh, cloaks aren't a consideration, well, there's a distinct element of uh, unrealism, inaccuracy there because of how useful they are. Cloaks basically are always there in the past. When you're outside, of course, and stuff, like uh, uh, when you, like, if, if you're not using the cloak and you're out in the rain getting wet, 
you kind of would wish you would have a cloak. So I'm not saying there was no cases of people not wearing cloaks in the medieval past. I'm not saying that, okay? But if they have the money and the ability, like this is this is one of those things that so many people liked. Maybe maybe I'll show you how this does up. So you see it's a it's a pin. See you see the you see the pin, and so you thread the pin through the cloak, and it goes down like that, and then you just clasp it in, and there you go. You have the cloak. And the, am I knocking the mic? My apologies. Aha! I am cloaked! That's, that, 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 you know, that's where the concept comes from. You know, like in Star Trek and everything, they got a cloak on and stuff like that because it helps you hide. I can't see!